Thanks, Michael. So if you're just joining us, you're, tight, you're right in time for Tech Central. And today we're going to take a look at video on demand, but more so how technology is impacting the culinary industry. Of course, here with me in studio is Ian Dennis. He's the head of video on demand here at the Standard Media Group. Ian, it's good to have you this morning. Thanks so much for having now, me. Now, the thing is, the irony is, and he confessed to me, is that he's head of video on demand here at Standard Group, but he still doesn't, you still have the... I still have a the decoder. decoder. He still, who still has a decoder in 2018? Even Michael I, doesn't have a decoder. Uh -huh. Why? How? I, as a millennial, uh -huh. as a young person who is the head of video and demand, uh -huh. Ian, you're letting us I, down. No, I prefer using both technology, the new technology and the old technology. So really? I see the other one that's phased out so that I can still have it in the house. You as, still want to see yes, it phased out? It's already phased out. I know, it is. Speaking of which, yes. video on demand, mm -hmm. how has that changed um, how people communicate? No, it actually has changed a lot because you get to realize as humans our habits are actually changing mm -hmm. and as technology is changing it means that how you're consuming our information and our entertainment has actually quite changed because right now everybody has a phone, everybody's always on the move, so everybody wants to con consume content at their particular convenience. So what video on demand is, is just platforms whereby it enables people to consume content at their particular convenience, that's what I actually see, mm -hmm. and that you'll get to realize one of the platforms that people use every time is YouTube, and that's one of the platforms that is actually changing how guys are consuming content. Yes? you got to love YouTube. You've yes, I've, love yes. YouTube. I, 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 didn't, I binge watch every, every evening, every day, because you get to realize the reason why we, video is actually changing a lot in the sense that it's a platform whereby you can get, not only get to get entertained, mm -hmm. but it's a platform where you can get to learn. And just giving an example, probably you want to buy a new phone. Mm -hmm. What exactly do you do? The first thing you go to YouTube, you want to search, you want to check the reviews. Everything Does it happen a lot? From makeup yes. to if I want to learn about Bitcoin or blockchain, uh -huh. if I want to um, see an interview from perhaps another network, yes. literally everything is thanks to Google. And the beauty of it is that you can do it at your own time. You know, because uh, we were talking about the decoder where you have to sit there and watch it. But the beauty is that the way technology is changing is that now you can check anything at your own time and mm -hmm. you can do it at your own time. So when you're on break, you can consume anything that you want. You work in a newsroom. Yes. Has video on demand um, changed or influenced um, the newsroom? And more so perhaps even for our viewers, how it also has gone to affect them in the sense that, like you said, they get content then and then. You don't have to wait like a long time ago, you go about your day and you everyone times the 9 p.m. news. Yes. How has that also influenced not only the newsroom but also the viewers on the other side of the coin. Um, you have to realize that every, we're in, a, we're in an era whereby everybody wants to consume. Something has happened, everybody wants to consume it mm. then and then. Mm. And the only gadget that you have at any particular point in time is mobile. So you get to realize that whenever, let's say, the breaking news that's happening right now in Marikiti, someone probably see it on Twitter and then probably comes to YouTube to check that particular video. So it's actually changed a lot in the sense that how the newsroom has traditionally operated is that there are set times whereby they air out the... Uh, was it called the news, but as it is now, right now, the viewers want to view everything at their convenience. And the first one, and it's actually changing how exactly we are distributing content, in that we have to ensure that we are first into giving out the news and the information to the viewers and being the first. So that's primarily just change how the first, uh, how fast we're distributing news and how fast we're distributing content. That's how video is actually changing this particular dynamics of the newsroom. And just on that same breath, mm -hmm. um, technology is beautiful, mm -hmm. um, but however, there must be a downside to having video on demand in mm -hmm. the sense that, um, you know what, there's this saying that um, changes, you cannot um, escape change. Yes, be it as true. a company mm -hmm. or as an individual. Mm -hmm. But also video on demand, does it have its own downfall? And if it does, what are those? Um, the only downfall, or rather what I've seen, it's, uh, and it's been talked about a lot, mm -hmm. is about the issue about fake news. Uh -huh. Because you have to realize um, whenever anything happens, someone will be quick to actually put it out. Mm -hmm. But most of the time is that the time in which one verifies that particular news becomes now the obstacle. So you find most of the time you find that something has happened, but someone goes out first and issues out an information that is incorrect, and then therefore you're not actually communicating, you're giving the wrong information to the viewers. I think that's the biggest downside to it. Mm. And another one is that the lack of control in that the kind of information, because you know, it's a free platform. Mm. You can decide you can decide you have a YouTube channel, you decide to put anything out there. So also the issue of control, and that's primarily one of the downsides I actually see in this particular uh, industry yes all right Ian um, touch on the basis because video on demand was not there five years ago it was actually it was say YouTube <laughs> we use well, it as an but example. YouTube is not but video on demand when you put okay when you put it in terms of definition it is 
Because really? our video on demand is literally a platform whereby one can consume content at their particular convenience. So, oh, yes. Not, that's not, not really necessarily at that point in time. For, mm -hmm. You get the example of the Marikiti that we've just broken the news. Yeah. If I was to go right now to Senate Group, I would see it streaming live. That's um, at that time. Yeah. Uh, but some cases like on YouTube, mm -hmm. as much as I get to watch videos at my pace, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily as well as on that particular time, unless I'm streaming. Yeah. That's different. Yes. So, but then go ahead, define for us what video on demand is. So, okay, on the context, rather just trying to break it down to just on a context that someone can get to understand. So video on demand is literally any platform that one can get to choose the kind of content that they like to interact with at their convenience. Mm -hmm. So it's literally any platform whereby it contains videos and mostly videos, most of the time, or audio, whereby anybody who comes to that content can choose what they want to watch. That's why it's just video on demand. I demand to watch this, so you can literally go to that platform, search for whatever you want to watch, and get to consume it there and then. All right. Yes. Talk to us about the technology behind video on demand. So, is it some genius who came up with it? And don't tell me YouTube. No. Uh, but just demystify uh -huh. that for us. Mm -hmm. So, primarily, uh, primarily the technology is. The tech that comes. I like. Let me use an, use an example to, mm. to. I don't know if you've interacted with Netflix before. Yes, I have. There's a reason why decoders are uh, not are. very popular right now, Ian. But we'll leave that for another day. So probably it's an infrastructure whereby you as a user, you can come and register on it, get to submit your information. At the same time, that particular platform contains different kinds of content, from entertainment to news, whereby you, when you as a user gets to register on that particular platform, you can get to choose from the variety of content that fixed you, uh, that actually, what's it called, is to your particular interest. Interest. Let's say that let's say you're interested in entertainment, right? When you come to that platform, it offers a variety, and in that particular variety that uh, that particular platform does offer, you can get to interact with whatever content that you want. So it's literally, I can say, it's a platform that it's whereby content creators can get to create the kind of content that it's suitable to the audience, and the audience gets to choose what kind of content they can get to interact mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking of content, mm -hmm. as head of um, video and demand mm -hmm. here at the Standard Media Group, mm -hmm. I'm told that uh, today you have a surprise for our guests, yes. for our loyal viewers yes. on KTN News, mm -hmm. and just across Standard Media Group. What is that? So primarily, what you're launching today is a show called Sizzle. Sizzle. Sizzle, yes. Uh, it's primarily a cooking show whereby for us what you want to do, you want to redefine how guys are consuming content. And it's primarily the show whereby you can, you know, there's so many cooking shows out there, but the different, uh, or rather the, our different treat is that this particular show shows you how you can create meals, quick and easy meals, in short, uh, within a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Because let's say for me, uh, I don't like cooking, but I never mind, I never mind cooking at any, I never mind to learn how to cook in just quick, easy ways. So this particular show primarily shows you how you can create quick, easy meals. So why should Zinzi choose Sizzle over going to YouTube and going to f Tasty Foods mm -hmm. and watching their YouTube channel? So f uh, one of all is about the cuisines that actually created on that particular show. It's different kinds of cuisines. And also another thing is that it's quick and easy meals. That's primarily what you're actually selling. Okay. In that you can learn within three minutes how to create something that will wow your friends, that will wow your colleagues within that period of time. What influenced this decision and why the food sector? Um, what influenced this uh, non affinity report? Okay. The good thing about digital is that you can we can mine data what guys are interested in. Right. And one of the things we got to re realize that guys are interested in is in terms of learning how to know how to create meals and stuff about life and style. So we can mine data from the guys who consume our content on standard Standard, digi uh, standard digital, so that's primarily what influenced this. You know, um, and this is something we were talking about last, last week with our panel here mm -hmm. in uh, State of the Nation, mm -hmm. is that right now in this day and age, oil is no longer the biggest um, value, it mm -hmm. is data. Yeah. But just to pick up from what you've mentioned, mm -hmm. um, the issue of um, mining data for the, for the cooking show, mm -hmm. this, it's called Sizzle. Yeah. Um, the videos are about three to seven minutes long. Yeah, three to five to seven. Why? Yes. They're short videos. Yes. And you believe Kenyans will be able to understand how to make a meal throughout yeah. um, three to seven minutes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, what, the thinking behind the, the length, it's usually, first of all, you want them to save on their data. That's the but other the thing. Same, yes, you want them to save on their data. And also at the same time, you want them to quickly learn and just to be entertained through it. You want something that's engaging, something that's catchy. Because the thing about videos is that 
if it's boring, the, five, five, the uh, first five seconds of any video determines whether you're going to watch it or not, because you have the option to mm. do it. Mm. And that's one of the things that you're actually quite key on in terms on standard digital videos. You want to create short videos that are quite interactive, that guys can come on and consume it and enjoy it until the end. I'm, I'm glad you said that, the whole yeah. aspect of data bundles, because yeah. right now you know what's been happening in Uganda, the issue yes. of taxing. <laughs> that has become a sensitive topic. Yes. And I'm glad that you also pointed out the aspect, because every single time um, at the end of the year, Google mm -hmm. releases its results. Yes. How to resolve. Yes. And Kenyans, for the past, I think, five years, ever since I've been keeping my eyes on it, mm -hmm. the third question of how to, under the how to sector, yeah. is how to make pancakes. Yes. Kenyans are quite interested. You can learn uh, the On food yeah. matters. Yes. Yeah. And Kenyans want to learn, or rather, we have, a, we have a very interesting audience who are Kenyans. And the thing about Kenyans is that you always have to, always learn to understand them. And that's the thing about digital. It helps you understand your audience. You can create something if it's not consumed. You can always tweak it. And that's the beauty about digital. And that's the way we as Standard are actually heading it. And through the brand, the Standard Digital Videos, what you want to do is that you create something that guys are actually interested in. These digital videos, Yes. where can one get them? Is it our YouTube channel? Is it our website? Where will they be displayed? So there are two mediums whereby we'll be distributing it. They can come to the standard digital, the ke.ke mm -hmm. forward slash videos mm -hmm. to consume the content, or also they can also come to the YouTube channel, uh, the standard digital videos, where they can actually get to consume. Because for us, we're trying to redefine this particular space within our market, and the direction you're actually taking is videos, whereby we want to ensure that we create interactive content where guys can get to consume and get to interact with. Yes, and you want to add on to what exactly you're offering. So, besides maybe the articles you get to consume on the site, you can also get to enjoy videos and you want to just ensure that you binge watch and standard digital videos. All right, because I have you here. Yes. Allow me to take the advantage of just even taking this a bit broad. Yes. Um, what video on demand means for Kenya and generally for the um, African market, because then again, everyone has this, a yes. smartphone. This is literally um, your TV, your mm. camera, everything, your mm. calendar, yeah. etc. What would video on demand do? What are the opportunities there? And not just for us as journalists mm -hmm. in the newsroom, but even for um, Mamamboga or, or, or Mondi who is selling fish by the lakeside mm -hmm. or someone in Mombasa. How can Kenyans tap into video on demand for their own benefit, not as consumers, but as people who can also use the product? Because that's the other thing. We tend to become users of Facebook, yeah. of Twitter, of Google, of YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, but how can I take it to my advantage? Probably from a business perspective yeah and uh, one of the inf or rather I look at it in terms of advertising advertising is actually get to change and how video on demand is going to change uh, this particular context is in terms of native advertising mm -hmm. whereby as an advertiser you can get through the products you're creating mm -hmm. we have a specific kind of niche audience that you can actually get to tap in so how I'm looking at it in terms of the business context is in terms of native advertising whereby you as an advertiser you can get to have your product um, you can have your product you can have your product uh, interact with your particular audience at your particular convenience. Because the thing about digital is that the audience is very specific and each particular, con each particular content has this particular audience. So through this particular platform, what we have is that you can just get to natively advertise to a specific audience and communicate to your specific audience as compared to traditional advertising. So that's how one can get to leverage on this particular platform on a business context. All right, fantastic. Yeah. Then I am so glad that um, now you as our viewers have an idea of what video on demand is, how you can also use it not only as a consumer, but possibly for the aspect of of business. Right now, Michael Gitonga is on standby with Chef Jazz to take us through that amazing, delicious meal that they have already prepared. And here's the thing, you get to meet Jazz through um, the, so the platforms that um, Ian Dennis had just mentioned about, and she'll teach you how to make pretty cool meals. Michael. Yes, and uh, well, I get to do all the hard work, and that's to taste the food that has been made here. <laughs> and Jasmine Masharia, what is this that you've prepared? These are Turkish eggs, basically. Turkish eggs. Yes, eggs. But are... just uh, a disclaimer: they're actually just Kenyan eggs. But <laughs> the, the meal is called Turkish eggs. Yes. And, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then they're cooked in a tomato sauce, mm -hmm. um, which I've seasoned with a bit of curry, a bit of mixed herbs, and a bit of sugar just to kill the acidity of tomatoes. Okay. Yeah. So I and, want and, you to and, just taste. And, uh, the, the beauty about this, Zinzi, yeah. and anybody else who might be uh, thinking how you're going to prepare your meals is that it's been done in record time three minutes literally and the meal was ready so yeah. like they say the the proof is in the pudding in the pudding so before I dig into this I just want us to lay, take a look at uh, you know some of the clips and one of the clips that's going to run so that you can get an idea of what we're talking about meanwhile yeah 
I am waiting to let you know how this meal is going to be. But let's run the clip. The clip. Hi, how are you? Hey, Joy. How are you doing? I'm good. We're almost here. So I think we'll be there in about 30. Traffic isn't too bad. I hope you're ready. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you were coming today? <laughs> Can you Oh, yeah, of course. Yes, I remember. Um, so 30 minutes? Yes. Okay, see you in a bit. Hey guys, so if you've ever been ambushed by your friends like what just happened to me right now, let me show you how to whip up a quick and easy meal that's going to be ready in minimal time. Today we're going to be making some chicken tikka kebabs using a lot of easily found ingredients. We're going to be using some chicken, we're going to be using some red and yellow peppers because they're very sweet. Um, we're going to be using some onions and some garlic because you're Garlic is bay, right? Uh, we're going to be using some tikka spice, some natural yogurt, but if you're home and you can't find some, you can use mala as well. And we're going to use some tomato paste. So let me show you how to whip up a quick and easy meal. And now to make our tikka. So I'm going to start with the natural yogurt and just mix that in with all of these amazing ingredients. This is about a cup of natural yogurt. Gonna mix in some oil, some of the tikka spice. This is about two tablespoons. A bit of salt, a bit of black pepper. Remember not to put too much salt because the tikka spice has salt. About a teaspoon of tomato paste. And the garlic which I've just chopped up. This is about four cloves. Then we just mix that into a nice paste. At this point, we're gonna throw in our chicken. So all of the chicken goes in. The peppers. This adds a really nice sweetness to the recipe. And the onions. Like it's just such a vibrant kebab. So now that we've mixed up the tikka, you don't even have to marinate it just for five minutes and it's good. This is the part you get your hands dirty. So we're just gonna, I've lightly greased my tray and I've preheated my oven to 180 degrees just for 10 minutes. And now I'm gonna put this on the skewers. There's no science to this. You just put different things after the other. Make sure you don't make it too high. Don't start here because you need you know, some space for someone to hold it. And just like that, ready in 20 minutes. I'm so ready for my girls to come over. We're holding your plate. All right, and uh, basically that's uh, a meal that you prepared there. So what kind of meals can we expect? I, do you have like a leaning towards maybe like Indian meals? Mm. This I know is Turkish. Um, yes, uh, I mean, I do international meals. I do Kenyan, I do Mediterranean meals, mm -hmm. everything. Okay. But what I love doing is showing people complicated things, but simplifying them. Okay. Yeah. Now, this Quick is a very simple meals. meal that you've made. I and mean. I will let you know how this is. I mean, I think um, one of the jobs that I would have loved to do in my life, yeah. if I wasn't doing this, you'd be is a chef? food tasting. Really? Oh, food tasting. Not even... <laughs> I'm mm. here thinking you'd say you'd be a chef. Mm. And I mean, all the ingredients are locally found. Mm -hmm. Tomatoes. You can mm -hmm. buy anywhere, okay. surely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> I'm taking over the show right now. I can tell you that this is definitely... A scrumptious meal. Oh, thank you. And all we have here is eggs and tomatoes. Imagine. Okay, we had um, an article this morning yes. on the nutrition levels of our food mm. um, in the newspapers. Yeah. And this, I think, comes as very nutritious. There's a lot of protein here. Of There's, course, um, yeah. Vit uh, what, what is the tomato? Is it apparently, they're fruits, but apparently wisdom is knowing not to put them in a fruit salad. <laughs> Have you heard that? <laughs> Wait. Yes. So a tomato is a fruit? Apparently, yes. But you don't put it in a fruit salad? Yes. Oh, okay. I know. Actually, how would it taste with in the fruit salad? I don't know. I've never you tried. tried on that, I should. On that. I should try that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perhaps that episode will come on season. Yeah. So, yeah. Experiment that. 
So I'm mm, glad you like it, but the rest look so hungry. Um, yeah, Zinzi, I'm sorry that um, you're not doing this part of the show, but I can definitely guarantee you that, excuse me, in case you have um, guests who are coming and you have no idea what to make for them, and are you just making main meals, main courses, or is it like... Everything, everything from, from, breakfast, from breakfast, lunch, dinner, biting, snacks, everything. If I wanted to maybe have a healthy sandwich to carry to work, is yes. that something that I can find on the channel? Of course, yes, mm -hmm. yes. We're going to be doing many more episodes. Every Actually, from the first episodes that you'll be watching every week, they're all very different. Like from this first episode, it's when your friends just... The chama shows up and you need you to... Do. Whip up something quickly in the next episode. There's someone who wants to know what to do with gouaches that they got from their grandmother. You see, so you will see oh, a bit wow, of everything. Awesome, yeah. yes. and, and I think one of the things that now that you mentioned gouaches is the fact that uh, we have the traditional way of making yes. gouaches are just boiled. Yeah. Are there other ways of making gouaches? So many other ways. And oh, really? yes, and I guess they just have to wait for the show to see that. Okay, what about Ndomas? <laughs> At Ndoma. At Ndoma. Yeah. All right. Uh, meanwhile, there are no Kwashe. limits with this show. <laughs> Video on demand is definitely something. Yes. To, what gave you this idea? Um, I mean, I was given a call by my friend Ian, and mm. I I was game for this because I've always wanted to do a cooking show. And okay. yes, I generally cook a lot, so and I am a chef. You are. <laughs> yes. I mean, from this, even if you're not a chef, <laughs> trust me, I have no problem with that. Okay. Yes. And what do you see as the future of the show? Oh wow. Um, it's becoming a household name, people watching it, cooking the things that they're seeing. Um, yeah, kids, mothers, even fathers, why not? Mm. Yeah. All right, and maybe I'll bring in Zinzi here. And Zinzi... Um, there's a plate for you. There's a plate for you, so you can come and sample it and, <laughs> and see whether you agree with me. Because <laughs> if, if by Ian, any I'm chance so you thought you were going to get some of this, that's, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. at, Chef Jazz, what is this called? <laughs> Turkish eggs. <laughs> Turkish eggs. Have yeah. you Turkish asked her why, why Turkish? Well, well, I just gave the disclaimer that they're actually in Kenyan, Kenyan eggs. Yeah, but, but they originated, <laughs> the recipe originated from that. The recipe is okay. Turkish. Yeah. Okay, let's do this. Let's taste. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you're, 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 the, you're the techie. The techie just does, you know, oh, yeah. the, the work behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, this is not bad. That's I think it's good. Excellent. I'll take that as a compliment. This is actually good. Yes. So is this going to be on the first... Um, oh no, gosh. no, no. This was just a little something for you guys for oh, breakfast. Oh, just for us. Yeah. But yeah. I'm sure it will feature someone because I really want to make this... Yes. You know, I want to be a star at home and tell them, you know what? Yeah. Turkish eggs. And I yeah, do come over for brunch. And this took you three minutes? Yes. Hey. <laughs> There's a reason why we are all gifted in different ways. Yes. 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 <laughs> so, Zinzi, oh, I'm maybe. thinking that invite that you gave us as a group is now it is not possible. happening it is still not happening you know what we'll do we'll just watch youtube videos of chef jazz cooking and that will be dinner yeah yes i mean that yeah should be watching sizzle each and every week Excellent. anyway it's sizzle yes and it's being launched today yes. yes uh so how do i get sizzle do i just type sizzle on google i no. mean on uh, youtube uh you can go to youtube <laughs> You go to the Standard Digital videos, mm. that's where you can actually get Sizzle. And also you can come on the Standard Digital mm. website, standarddigital.co.ke forward slash videos. That's okay. where you can actually get the episode. So from today, from 8.30, it should be on. How where frequent I... are the, uh, are the um, what do you call them? The episodes. The the episodes going to be? Each and every week. Yeah. And each and every week, week, it's different kinds of meal, different yeah. kinds of situation. It's quite interactive, it's quite enjoyable. We should actually get you guys on one of the sites yeah, and we'll do one episode. Awesome. It's certainly our game. I mean, you guys as you can game? see, some of it's us... Gone. Are, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's gone. It's history. It's gone. He's not doing this for the camera. It's actually yeah. finished. It's yeah, actually no, no, finished. This, this it's quite enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. And that's primarily what you're trying to do, is that yeah. you're trying to redefine how guys are creating meals and trying to make it interesting, enjoyable, and something you can make at home at your convenience and okay. enjoying it. Now, I'm sure meals is just a starting point, but yes. where are we going with this when you talk about video in demand? Um, where we're going on it is that you want to just create different kinds of content that fit the different kinds of audiences. Because you get to realize maybe for you, like maybe more, you like watching business stuff. Yeah. You have, a, you have a show called Be A Shara Talk that you're launching. If, you have, if you're interested in matters of career, we also have something called Career Mondays. So we have different kinds of content that fix the context of the dif uh, different audiences. Mm -hmm. So whatever, it, we have things that you'll be interested in and things that will make you learn and just be entertained. That's normally what you're trying to do. Chef Jasmine, yes. two questions. Yeah. Question one, mm. is there a difference between cooking for a restaurant and then cooking for a TV show? Do you feel as if there's a there's a, there's a difference. Okay, I generally actually don't work in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. I actually run my own food studio. And I think um, what I love about this is that 
you can be creative. I can wake up today and decide I'm changing the menu, you know? So even cooking for you guys, it's like, oh, what can I make for them? Mm -hmm. So I love that. Number I love not having a schedule. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Good for you. Number two. Yes. Technology. Have you seen that video online where a robot is now making meals for people? Really? I've yes. seen that. I've seen uh, th th like such She's videos. How do they taste the salt? That's the thing. I was coming to that. <laughs> so <laughs> you even have like your fridge. If you run out of milk, your yeah. fridge automatically makes a request for really? you. Really? You don't even have to go to the store. Yeah. So all this technology yeah. that is happening, don't you not think it will influence or impact the culinary industry? And it's yes, so because way. food is. I think one thing I love about food is like it's like an art. You know, like I could be cooking this in today and I add a different spice mm. I'm like because oh, I usually don't even do it with curry powder I do black pepper you get it mm -hmm. so I feel like robots can't do that and yeah I don't think I'm that I'm like we are there yet where yes. we can trust a robot to make meals yes. yeah like, I don't feel like poison us we, you know? we are at that extent <laughs> but uh, yeah. would this also now kind of water down or change the industry when it comes to being a chef because here you are now basically instructing people on how to make meals and yeah. if I use an example of a magician yeah they normally keep you know, the secret the secrets, to themselves. So yeah. the, the mystery remains. Yes. But now here you are literally unraveling the, yes. the secret of cooking. Do you yeah. think it'll take away from the culinary industry? No, 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 no. I love I, I love it when other people know what to do. So Because I love the joy on someone's face when they try this and it works. Because they send me pictures, you know, that excitement. So why not share the recipes, you know? Yeah. I'm already done with my plate before yes, my cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zinzi so obviously, <laughs> obviously enjoying her meal thoroughly. So and, glad, uh, yeah. yeah, technology definitely is disrupting many things and cooking is just one of them. Yeah. Um, other areas that you possibly see that people can explore when it comes to video on demand? Um, uh, I already talked about uh, in terms of native advertising, in terms of how uh, video on demand is actually changing how guys are advertising in that in this particular space you have your set audience yeah. so for each particular c content you're creating you have your set audience guys are interested in so you sort of like bring the advertisers to that particular platform whereby they can communicate to their specific audience as compared to traditional advertising mm -hmm. so that's how exactly it's going to change in that even this particular show you'll be having different kinds of advertisers to come on board so that they can get to con uh, communicate to their specific audience okay yes. what would your advice be to content creators because we have people out there who have brilliant and many ideas mm -hmm. but normally the gap is between having those ideas and you know bringing them now to actual fruition like what you've done with this um advertise uh, what, what old advertise uh, or rather advice content creators just to focus on content because content is king mm -hmm. um, people, people want to you want to create a particular show but you think about what equipment i'm going to use whom mm -hmm. can i bring on board but obviously Content is king. Create content and be consistent. That's the only, as in that's yeah. the simple advice. Just mm -hmm. create content, that's be consistent, so and do the time start building. How do audience. you make the money out of it? Because there are those who possibly will think that right now, maybe this is because it's being backed up by an established mm -hmm. media house, but there are those who feel they have content which they like to put out there. So the thing is, uh, how you can make money out of it is for how you can build an audience out of it. Mm -hmm. So if you create your particular audience, it becomes easier for native advertising. And also the, third, uh, the different platforms you use, like Google, you get probably are driven out of it. Mm. But the key to this in terms of any content you're creating, audience. Build your audience and then with time it becomes easier than attracting guys. Even the, I know of small YouTube pages, mm. but they have specifically niche audience and yeah. they get advertisers. But YouTube and Google's advertisement in terms of uh, what is called YouTube economics, mm -hmm. um, even the top YouTubers will tell you mm. that YouTube doesn't pay very well. They then That's work true. with advertisers yes. yeah. and, and contracts and, yeah. and uh, endorsement because endorsement. in itself, even YouTube, no matter how many subscribers you That's have, true. and then you look at the, what it takes for you to generate that content, yeah. it just doesn't match up. That's true. And, and that's why I say audience is king. Once you build your audience, you can have, you can it's, now it's easier for you. Partner. Yes, yes, you can now easily partner and create money out of it. Yeah. All right. Michael, ideas. There you go. Ideas, and um, <laughs> thank you very much. I think we'll wind it up right there. Thank yes. you very much, Jasmine, for joining for us this morning. Me. And more so. Uh, for making a very wonderful and scrumptious meal right there. Thank you. So the episode's launched today morning. Yes. And um, you should say something about you guys will be live. So that one will be a live one? Oh, will, no, will no, there no, be right. one that it will be live? No. We'll do, actually, that's yeah. a nice idea. Yeah. Yes, we'll have you on it. We'll, we'll do a live one. Yeah. I agree. Yes, we'll I agree. I got excited too, my life fell off. But I agree. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But each and every week, yeah. standard digital videos, guys should come on the platform, guys should watch, and guys should be entertained. All right. We'll do one. We should do one. Today. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. We certainly are. I'm, I'm game, and I, I will admit right here on <laughs> national TV that I love cooking. Uh, so I'm oh. up to the challenge. And I mean, feel free to even put a competition between my calls tonight. Michael, you love cooking or you love eating? Both.
I thought you were a taster. Yes, I, you I say am, he's a, a taster. I am a taster, but I love cooking as well. Ooh, cooking and, and more so. More so. <laughs> and, 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 and no, I have evidence. Jazz. And more uh -huh. so, I mean, the show is there so we can put the test on screen. Uh, but having said that, I love to cook, you know, from the periphery where I'm watching, then tasting. Yeah, wow. Well, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> before we wind up, before we wind up, I just want us to look at some of the tweets that are coming, but maybe um, for the benefit of somebody who might be joining us right now, yeah. how to get these videos and where? Just give us that information. So how you can get the videos, standard digital, uh, the .co .ke forward slash here, videos. You know. They should have it somewhere here. I'm trying to do like this. <laughs> <laughs> like a rapper. Subscribe, subscribe. You know, subscribe. Link in the yeah, welcome to our channel. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And also YouTube started digital videos. So guys can go there, subscribe, because what we have is it's content from Monday to Sunday. Each and every yeah. day is a different wow. kind of show. Wow. Every, uh, as in anything that breaks out, you have news content, entertainment content. So we're trying to redefine this particular space mm -hmm. in our market. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's called Sizzle. And yes. thank you for joining us on a sizzling show. Yes. So we're going to wind it up right <laughs> there. A sizzling meal. <laughs> yeah. And of course, we had a sizzling chef right there. <laughs> My name is Michael G. Gitonga. The G today is good food made real good. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 I got to give it up. I know. Oh, that was very creative, Michael. Yeah. My name is just Zinzi Kibiko. Thank you so much for watching, guys. See you tomorrow. <laughs>